humble mug. Hey everyone, welcome to the Humble Lounge, where we sit down to talk a little more casually about certain topics that come to mind from time to time on this gaming journey. For today's topic, I wanted to talk about something that's happening right now, this month, at least at the time of this video's release. On April 22nd, 2024, Paragon the Overprime will be shutting down. If you don't know what Paragon the Overprime is and why this is a big deal, I can explain. Before I can get into talking about the Overprime though, I have to first run you through the story of the original Paragon. Paragon was a MOBA originally developed by Epic Games back in 2016, and at first it seemed like a really promising new IP. At the time, I personally remember League of Legends being a pretty dominant force in the MOBA genre, but that was a game I could never really get into personally. I think that this was mostly due to the top-down perspective of the game. I just couldn't seem to follow along with what was going on, to be honest. Instead, I discovered Smite, which is still going strong today and is even expecting a sequel here soon. The third-person, behind-the-back perspective made the game feel more intimate to me, and I felt the impact of my character's attacks so much more. So then Paragon enters the scene with a similar third-person perspective, but also with an entirely different aesthetic in comparison to Smite. Forgoing the cartoony aesthetic of Smite for a genuinely gorgeous, realistic sci-fi look, Paragon was a real sight to behold when I first ever jumped into it on my PlayStation 4. And so for a time, Paragon was shaping up to be our new favorite MOBA. We actually ended up playing it more than Smite for quite a while because we were loving the characters and the setting and the mechanics. My friends and I would jump on just about every evening and get a couple of games in. I personally started to lose a little bit of interest in the game after a while though because to me, it just felt like a game of Paragon would simply take way too long. Sometimes I'd be playing for over an hour straight before the battle finally ended and this started to drive me away from the game, especially if we played that long only to lose. My friends continued to play, and I had entertained the thought of maybe jumping back in one day, but before I knew it, the original Paragon got shut down. Epic Games is perhaps better known for their work on a little game called Fortnite, and after it started really blowing up in 2017, Epic cut down the size of the Paragon development team so that they could pump more resources into their new cash cow. Finally, in April 2018, due to both the diminishing player base of Paragon and the rising meteoric success that was Fortnite, Epic closed Paragon down, and we thought it was for good. And looking back, I guess I was part of the problem being that I turned away from Paragon for a bit there, but I was still shocked and saddened to see it go. I paid attention to all of the patch notes that Epic would give out for the game in the hopes that maybe they would speed it up a bit and then I'd come back to it. But I never got that chance, and much to the lament of my friends especially, Paragon became nothing more than a memory for a long time. What I didn't realize was that after Paragon shut down, Epic decided to release all of the game's assets as free-to-use assets, and due to that, there were two main contenders that decided to enter the ring and take on the mantle of continuing Paragon's legacy. The first title to come out and really show some promise was Omida Studio's predecessor, and this company called Netmarble was able to even get the rights to the Paragon name for their own title called Paragon the Overprime. And get this, the two games released within days of each other on Steam in December 2022. Paragon the Overprime released on December 5th, 2022, and according to my Steam records, I added it to my library on the 7th, which was the day I heard about this from a coworker. Though I was really hyped for the potential competition that two games using the same assets could bring, I didn't give either a go for the longest time. I was working a job where I felt like I really didn't have enough time for games, and this was also right before the holidays, so I was pretty busy. I also didn't really want to revisit Paragon unless I was able to get that original Paragon squad back together to play. But life had changed so much for all of us around this time, and so I was mostly playing single player games. In the last couple of months of 2023, leading into the early months of 2024 though, I did start to finally put some time into the Overprime after one of my buddies from that original Paragon squad was able to get back online again. I think it's notable to point out that the Overprime was the first competitive game I dived back into since 2020, as I had decided to stop playing them after years of exclusively playing pretty much only competitive games. I had looked into Predecessor as well, and it appeared that Predecessor had more supporters and that Pred was also more similar to the original Paragon, but the Overprime was so much faster, and if you remember how I was saying earlier that the original Paragon felt a little too slow for me, this was exactly what me and my buddy were hoping to see. And please don't take this as a slight towards Predecessor or the original Paragon, I'm just saying that this was my initial appeal to the Overprime, and I know that I'm actually in the minority for having this opinion. Similar to what you see in a bunch of other MOBAs, the general goal of the Overprime is to dominate and kill the other team while also trying to juggle various objectives, defend your structures, and destroy theirs. Both the original Paragon and Predecessor have two towers, an inhibitor, and the core for you to get through. But the Overprime only has one tower, so that's one less structure for you to worry about, and this also helps the game's pace a lot if a faster experience is 
what you're looking for. Additionally, the overprime has a sprint function which allows you to run a lot faster on the map and get in and out of battles really quickly. I don't know enough about Predecessor honestly to be able to compare it to the overprime other than that one detail I just shared about the number of towers, and from what I've heard, Predecessor is a lot more similar to the original Paragon if that's what you're looking for. In fact, Paragon purists often dismiss the overprime as nothing more than a brawler because of how fast-paced and action-focused it is. Now personally, and again, I'm no expert, I'm very much a casual player, I think that the Overprime still indeed felt a lot like the original Paragon and like a typical MOBA experience. As I started to re-familiarize myself with the game, learn how to build my characters and so on, I was really noticing a difference in my gameplay and I loved getting better at experimenting with builds and counter builds. That, to me, is a big part of the core experience of a MOBA. So anyway, for a good couple of months there, my buddy and I would hop on Paragon the Overprime and I have to admit we had a lot of good times. I personally always liked playing as Greystone back in the original Paragon days. His character design and moveset somewhat reminds me of Dart from The Legend of Dragoon, and being that that game is one of my favorites ever, Greystone was probably the very first character I tried out back then. Naturally, it was Greystone who I gravitated towards the most once I got into the Overprime, while my buddy got to see his good old friend Grim.exe again. He was also really good with Murdoch, and his Rictor was pretty vicious. I didn't venture out too much from Greystone myself, but I started really enjoying the Phase gameplay since she reminds me a lot of Cupid who was one of my mains in Smite. During one of our play sessions we met a really fun Narbash and Rampage squad one night and with them we ended up winning like 8 games in a row. I felt like we were just starting to get into the rhythm of this game, then I had some family stuff come up around the time I started this channel, and then once I got back home from that, I saw the announcement that the game was actually being dropped, and somewhat poetically, it's going to be shut down in April of 2024 basically six years after the original was also shut down in April of 2018. This was really surprising too because they had just put out a new character, Terra. It was also just really disheartening. Between the two of us we had burned quite a bit of time playing, learning about, and enjoying the game, and it was beginning to feel like old times again. I was also a big big fan of how much faster the games were. Sometimes I'd be done in like 20 minutes, and I think the longest game I ever played clocked out to 48 minutes or so, and that was a back and forth nail biting type of game. I know that technically speaking, I still have Predecessor to look towards if I wanted to scratch that Paragon itch again, but personally, I like the way the Overprime was going. Truthfully, I think my time with Paragon is done, I've just been hurt too many times with this franchise. But to be fair, I thought Paragon was done back in 2018. I'm thankful that for at least a period of time, I was able to see a Phantom I never thought I'd see again. And I also just wanted to say that this video is in no way meant to criticize the Overprime team or to throw shade on Predecessor or the original Paragon or anything else, but rather just to serve as a little time capsule for myself 10 years or so from now just to say, hey, we actually did get to play Paragon again for a while there and it was fun. So let's pour one out for Paragon the Overprime. It was good while it lasted. Really, really good. If you're still here, thanks so much for watching, and as always, stay humble.